Thomas, I am so proud to be here today, standing in front of our best friends and family, and promising you my love and respect forever. I thought of many fancy ways of saying my vows, but I decided to settle with the reality that I'm not the writer of the family. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to borrow some words. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love you when you get up at five in the morning and make me coffee and send me off on my day of work. I love you when you say just the right thing when I'm feeling insecure or anxious about something. I love you when I go into our bedroom and you're already there hugging our puppy. I love you when you don't get mad at me when I shout your name from across the house 25 times a day. <laughs> I love you for all the small things that you are and do that make my life filled with joy. I wouldn't change a thing about you. I promise to always give you my best and to make our relationship a soft place to land on. I can do anything, be anything, and do anything, and do or anything, just as long as you can. Thomas? I wanted to kiss her since she came down the aisle. Of the <laughs> we got back. There'll be plenty of Yeah, there'll be plenty of <laughs> read this here. I, I met Tabata at a point in my life when I wasn't looking for a relationship, you could say actively avoiding a relationship, and uh, I was blindsided, quite honestly, by Nate and Patricia's friend that I agreed I'd be willing to meet, but I said, you know, don't, don't expect anything out of me. So, uh, two months later, we were living together. <laughs> three years and three days later, here we stand. Who would have thought that after a decade of traveling around Latin America that I'd move back down the street from my folks over Brazilian? <laughs> Top has changed my life in innumerable ways. Uh, lifestyle changes and other stuff, they're all obvious. But uh, more important than anything else, Tavit has upended my cynicism and uh, reaffirmed, honestly reaffirmed my belief in true love. I love Tavit for many reasons, her laugh, Anybody who knows her well uh, can probably hear when she's not even in the room. Her frenetic energy, the way she swears in Portuguese when she's mad, her easy friendliness with strangers, her profound compassion for those less fortunate than her and for animals, her talent as a chef, and the fact that although patience is not her greatest forte, <laughs> she has great patience for me. But what makes us work as a couple above all else are Atavata's candor and frankness. There are no games in our relationship. It's a clear commitment, and the more that I give to this relationship, the more that our love grows. She, in turn, has stood by my side through highs and lows and the occasional global media scene. <laughs> Tabata, as your husband, I promise to always give you my best, to hold nothing back, and to put my every energy into making our lives as positive, loving, and meaningful as possible.
When the sky boom boom doom, when the sky when the sky boom 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 I won't cry, no I won't, I won't cry, no I won't boom boom boom, no I won't, no I won't. Casey, I'm figuring it out from now. Thank you. My name is uh, Greg. I am uh, one of the co-best men at this event. I am uh, honored to share this duty with James Cohenstam, Thomas's brother, and you will be hearing from him next. Um, the reason why you're going to hear two toasts tonight, and there's two best men, because truly, Thomas is like a brother to me. Uh, he and I grew up together. I have two older sisters, and I never had a brother, so... Uh, Thomas is the brother that, that I never got to have, and uh, we've been through a lot together. You know, we've had a lot of shared life experiences, and, you know, he was the best man at my wedding. We, he, I got married five years ago, uh, delivered a wonderful toast. Um, I have an 18-month-old son, and Thomas is the godfather. <laughs> so, he and I are pretty tight, and um, that's why it's such a tremendous honor to be here tonight. Uh, sharing in these duties. Now, we were friends for a long time, all through grade school, actually. But in high school is when we really, really became good friends. In fact, we were such good friends in high school, we won an award for it. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. The high, school, the high school Hall of Fame, you know, like most likely to, you know, class clown, we got the best buddies award. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we won that one by a landslide uh, because we were pretty much inseparable in high school. And just for the record, as a quick side note, Thomas won his own individual award. Some of you who went to Roosevelt High School in 1994 know this, but for the rest of you, it's going to be a total shock. And I'm actually glad you're all sitting down. Are you ready? <laughs> Thomas was voted by his peers as most outspoken. <laughs> no. Get out of here, him. He doesn't have opinions of his own. He's not going to share them with you. <laughs> Just to punctuate that point, our, our class president, Beth Collins, she was handing out the awards, and as he went up to his accept his award, he got into an argument with her as to why he wasn't the most outspoken person <laughs> at Roosevelt High School. <laughs> but that's Thomas. You know, that's, that's what we love about him. You know, there's so many qualities that I could, I could list off. And um, what I'm going to do is, is focus on two qualities that I admire most about him. Um, now, number one is his vision. Thomas is a visionary thinker. He can think outside the box. He's got a gift for, for perspective. He can approach a situation and look at the angle of it. Uh, to me, it might have been invisible, but to him, he makes it crystal clear to everyone. It's a real gift that he has. And number two, it's matched only by his courage. Because a lot of people can see things, but they don't always act on them. And Thomas is not afraid to engage and act on what he sees and to pull the trigger. Now, for example, an obvious example of this would be, would be his latest book. I mean, uh, Do Travel Riders Go to Hell? I assume everyone here has read it, or most of us have read it. Now, classic, classic example of what I'm talking about. He had a vision. He saw that he had a compelling story to tell about his travels in Brazil. But that wasn't all. It took courage to write that book. I mean, you, you guys read it, okay? <laughs> Not only you know was he you know basic basically you know uh, you know writing off his former employer you know he knew his career path was going to change forever once he did that that takes a lot.